Schemas and heuristics. What's their deal? Have you ever been on a fancy first date and despite those butterflies in your stomach from being nervous, you somehow still knew how to behave? You knew you needed to dress up, you had to be respectful, and you hoped that the date would end with a kiss. How did you know all of this if it was your first date? How do you know that for a job interview, you have to look proper, clean, and not only look professional, but sound professional? This prior knowledge to knowing how to behave in certain situations and with certain people is called a schema. In ancient Greece, from a very young age, a girl knew that when she would grow up, she was going to be at home, minding the household, cooking, cleaning, and raising children. She knew it because she'd seen it before. It was the norm of ancient Greek society, even though she herself had never done it before. However, schemas are not always specific enough for someone to form a genuine opinion about a person, a place, or a situation. A better breakdown of these general associations are mental shortcuts called heuristics. There are two types of heuristics, availability heuristics and representativeness heuristics. Availability heuristics depend on a person's past knowledge and experience with something to make a decision in the present. For example, Ares, the god of war and also the most hated god on Olympus, can't think of even five people who love him. Because of this, he decides that nobody loves him and may go on to believe that nobody ever will due to the fact that he's lived for centuries already and has no one who loves him. Then there's Athena, goddess of wisdom, who also happens to be a fantastic warrior. Athena has been successful in many battles and has won them, even against Ares. Her past victories will make her believe that she is the best warrior amongst the gods. Representativeness heuristics goes just a bit more specific than that. This category of heuristics is just a fancy way of saying stereotype. It is a quick way to make assumptions about someone based on previous knowledge of that person or what was heard about that type of person, then assuming most people, like that person, are the same. One of the biggest stereotypical misconceptions in Greek mythology is the goddess Aphrodite herself. It is from Aphrodite that we use the word aphrodisiac to refer to something that causes sexual excitement. The representativeness heuristic of Aphrodite is that she is a blonde, kind of dumb, and doesn't know much about anything except for love and sex. Anything associated with Aphrodite, any thoughts, any readings one may do, and her name comes up, immediately the idea is that something was sexual in nature. Representativeness heuristic can become a problem when others judge a situation or a person based on that stereotype. Actually, most people won't know that Aphrodite was one of the smartest goddesses and would ride into battle with Ares. She wasn't the weak and feminine character that her heuristic would assume. Most people think, oh, she was a blonde, she was probably dumb, which is wrong to assume. To recap, schemas are generalized frameworks for the way someone will know how to behave towards another person or a situation. Availability heuristics depend on how quickly people can think of past experiences to make a present decision, whether it is an internal or external judgment. And representativeness heuristics are inferences that the likelihood of an experience will happen based upon similar occurrences. Basically, there is just a fine line between all of these definitions, and schemas and heuristics are different sides of the same family. Hopefully, I've been able to help you differentiate between them all with a little help from my previous knowledge of Greek mythology.